Hello, my name is Andrea, and this is the podcast Andy Stashed. My uh, username on Ravelry is also Andy Stashed if you want to find me and look me up in front of me. Um, I wanted to go over some things that I've been working on lately. I haven't been doing these videos because a lot of things happened and I recently moved. I'm in a new space and it took us a little bit to get settled in here, so I'll give you some updates then. Uh, also, I wanted to show the things that I've been working on. I have a little project in here. Um, and this has been a project that, that's been going on for some time. I think I started this project in March or February. And now it's October. It feels like the feeling that this is almost done is really exciting but still this is taking this is taking a while so first yes i moved you can see my background is different this is my bedroom right now um i moved in june um i moved from one area one part of the general bay area to another part of the general bay area i'm really loving this new neighborhood and uh, city I'm in. So then summer came and summer was pretty busy. Um, I don't usually knit in summer. Summer I take a break anywhere from like around the end of May. I think I usually stop knitting and then I don't start knitting again until like probably around September. And I tried to pick up the needles during summer and it just doesn't happen if anybody is a summer knitter i know i listen to a lot of podcasts like the yarniacs um knitting posse love knitting posse um and the two knit lit chicks and they all seem to be uh knitting through summer quite well like sometimes they take little breaks here and there, it slows down a little bit, but they still knit. Like I completely stop. Like I don't do any knitting in summer. Um, one, I feel like my life gets a lot busier then. And two, I'm always like traveling, doing a lot of travel, going on vacation, things like that. So I just started picking up the knitting again, probably like a couple weeks ago. So that's why I started a video again. So, those things happened, move, summer came. Um, my husband and I went to Italy, so that was beautiful. We were there for three weeks in um, the end of August. Yeah, the end of August, it was really lovely. We had a great time. Um, if you want any um, rough, uh, recommendations, any tips and things like that, uh, let me know and I will definitely Give you all the info I have. I've been through the north of Italy and then into uh, the island of Sardinia. So let me get started on what I'm working on. Um, this is, I have it here. This is a little baby cardigan that is by Little French Knits. And I bought this pattern and I think I bought the most difficult pattern that she probably has. Like this pattern is really doing me in. And I was just expecting like a seamless baby cardigan, baby sweater. But this is not um, what it turned out to be. Uh, I need to research the patterns more. I'll admit I didn't, I didn't really look at the details. I just saw the cover of this and I said, that's beautiful, that's gorgeous, I need to knit this. Um, so here it is. And what I didn't know was that it's knit in pieces and you have to seam it up. So it's done in one, two, three, four, five pieces. So the two sleeves are knit separately. 
the back is knit separately, and then each um, panel up the front is knit separately. And then you have to, after you've seen, seamed them all together, you have to go in and pick up the stitches for the button band. And I, let me tell you, it's just a real headache. So this is another reason why I quit knitting for the summer. Um, also, I'm using a very, very fine fingering weight. So it's just, it's like a real pain. This has turned into like a real pain to knit. But I really, this lace panel, this lace panel over here, I really loved doing that lace panel. That was so much fun. Um, I had a great time, but doing all these extra little pieces, I am not happy about. And so the lace panel goes to the front and then the back is buttoned up. And so the back is like that, if you can see that. And let's see, I'm knitting the largest size, which is supposed to be like around an 18 month. I'm not, I think mine might be like a little 18 month to two years because my yarn I think is a little bit thinner than what it calls for. Um, it calls for Cardiff Cashmere Classic. Um, it says you'll need six balls of that. So I'm using, and it says to knit it on a size two and a half needle. So I am using this yarn, which is another one of the Color Mart yarns that I love. And if you know Color Mart, I think I've told you before that Color Mart runs a little on the thinner side, what I found. So this is, I think this is a fingering weight. No, that's, yeah, that's about a fingering weight. Um, it is a cotton silk merino, very, very, very soft. And especially when you block it, it's just beautiful. Um, I love it. And I'm on the last part. I'm on the very last sleeve. So I did one sleeve already and here's my other sleeve. So I'm almost there, you can see. And then I'll put that aside. Here is the lace panel, which I loved knitting. I really loved knitting, knitting this lace up. So that is the front. Let's see back a little bit. And then, like I said, so I pinned it together. I pinned it together. just so I can get an idea of what it's gonna look like and everything. And then, and then um, this is the back, and then I have to go in and pick up the button band. So, and I already have some buttons. I got some beautiful pearl buttons from um, Mood in New York. And you know, since the move, I don't know where they are. I need to find them. I, I, my husband and I put all the knitting stuff away. So like we have more storage in this apartment. This isn't really an apartment. It's a two bedroom. This is a two bedroom. Um, we're about 1,250 square feet, but we have more storage than we did in our last place. Our last place, like basically we had a closet and, and that was it. We had a closet and we had like a laundry closet. But this place has far more, far much more storage. And once it's like kind of out of sight, out of mind type deal. So um, all of my knitting is in like one under the stairs closet space. And like just to get the knitting and the yarn and all my stuff out of there is kind of a hassle. And that's probably another reason why I haven't been knitting as much because again, out of sight, out of mind. Um, I didn't think that about my yarn. I, I, lo I love my stash, um, but it's kind of been tucked away. It's like all, all the stash is in one place. 
which is for me that was crazy because I had it all over my bedroom last time I had it like all over the um, there was a bookshelf and then I had these big baskets and it was all over there um, and now it like fits all in one place there's a lot I do have a lot but I can't believe it's all fitting there um, yeah so I mean it is what it is so let me see oh and this is the other sleeve I haven't blocked this yet I have blocked this this has been blocked and, and washed both panels and then the, the lace front. But this sleeve has not been blocked nor has it been washed. So it's like very, it's curling a little bit more since I took it off the needle. But let's see if I can do this. This is the side it's gonna go up and then it'll connect over here five pieces. I've never done a five piece anything before and then had to seam it up. No, 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 no. So maybe it's taking a long time to do this because the curling is so bad. So yes. The yarn is absolutely beautiful though. It's very beautiful. And again, it's a cotton silk merino from Pearl, so I'm mean not Pearl Soho, um, Color Mart. Okay, so that's mainly what it, that's like my main whip. I'm trying to finish this. I had a baby in mind to knit it for, and I thought I was thinking I could get this done in two months. And then just the yarn that I'm using, it's so thin, the needles, I'm doing it on, What's the needle this is? I think this is a size three needle. It doesn't say. These are, um, these are prims and they have kind of like a little bulb at the top of the, of the needle head and they're they are plastic usually I'm a strictly um, a rosewood or like um, like a bam a really nice bamboo needle knitter but these prims are so nice and I know I know they're plastic but they are absolutely great I would use these again if you have not knit with prims they are so the plastic is excellent I like them so much better than the metal needles sometimes when I knit with metal needles I find that like they stick a little bit like I don't know what it is it's like some kind of like build up gets on the needle um if you have any tips for that maybe I need to like rub it down with alcohol I don't know I don't know, but it just, the needle, like after you've used, I have some needles that I've had for years, metal needles, stainless steel needles, I guess are they stainless steel? Aluminum, aluminum needles. And they just like stick. And and they're like nice needles, they're addies, but I can't deal with the sticking once they start to get sticky. Um, so these prims are absolutely beautiful. And I got them on sale. I forgot the website that I got them on, but they were, they came in a set. There's a three, a four, and a five, and they all came together. So that's what I'm knitting this, this sleeve on. Um, so that's going to go there. So what am I wearing? I did not make this sweater, sadly. So, but I did wear it because I want to figure out what kind of, pattern this is so this is one of my favorite sweaters it's um isabel morant and i got it from a former boss in new york she was clearing out her closet and she asked me if i wanted it and i saw it and i felt it and i said absolutely yes i'll take it um it is 84 percent baby alpaca 
8% wool and 8% polyamide. And it is so soft, it's so fuzzy. You do have to wear something under because it is, it is open work, but it is so cozy and it keeps me so warm in the winter um, or even like in the cooler months, the fall. I love it, but I need to figure out what this pattern is because I would love to like remake something like this. So what I figured out is this is a one by one rib, easy to see on the bottom. I don't really, I've been trying to figure out what this open work lattice, kind of like a lattice stitch is. And then here is a nine stitch cable braid. And then it has one stitch going up the side as like a panel and then another stitch going up this side. And it's seam on the front and the back. Um, it doesn't. It has the garment tag down here, which I was able to get all the information from. It doesn't have the tag in the back anymore. It's gone. But I love this sweater out of all the things I've gotten from that boss, like this and my Le Creuset Dutch oven are probably like my most favorite things. I love this sweater. I wear it all the time. Um, but if you have any, if you can help at all with like this lace, pattern. Oh yeah, it has the cable braid up the side too. Um, I would really love to recreate it. I would love to make something else like it. I've been looking at the Knitting Full website. I don't know if you know that stitch dictionary. It's called the Knitting, it's called Knitting Fool. I've been following Knitting Fool for almost my entire knitting career. I started knitting in 2008, and I think I found the Knitting Fool sometime around there, like maybe 2009, something. And it's an entire website of stitches, and they have thousands, thousands of stitches. Go to Knitting Fool if you ever want to just like browse stitch patterns mindlessly go to it um and they have it all, all categorized like by alphabet alphabetically they have it categorized by stitch count um they have it categorized by like stitch type so they have cables they have cable panels they have um eyelets they have lace they have zigzags they have everything um, this one I'm trying to figure out like what it kind of like you see there's like an open like a right leaning and left leaning and then it opens up like that looks like a double yarn over maybe and then it goes back but um, sadly I got in the, in the part, in the place that I live now. It's like, I keep saying an apartment, but it's not really an apartment. It's like a small two bedroom house, but it's like, it's a part of a bigger Victorian house. So like the landlords live upstairs and then we're on the ground floor. Um, but they had a washer and dryer in the, in here, in our house, um, that we used and it was a Mila and I loved it and I could wash all my knitwear and everything on there. Love, love, loved it. But it was really, really old. And it was probably from like the early 90s, late 80s. And so I told that we told them like every time we run the laundry, every time we use the washer, it just floods, like leaks so much water. And so we just started putting towels down. So they tried to repair it and didn't last. Um, the guy, the repair guy just said, you can't really fix this anymore. So you might as well get a new washer and dryer. And I was crossing my fingers that they were gonna get us and then not, but it didn't happen. They, um, we got a new, nice front loading washer and dryer, brand new, um, good brand, but it's not a Mila and I, 
thought because it's front loading, I can wash it, my knits on delicate cycle. And so I did, and I put it on the lowest spin and um, it didn't, it, it, it shrunk it a little bit. And it kind of like felted one of my other sweaters too. So I'm really bummed out about that. So now I know that I cannot, um, I cannot spin. I think washing it on delicate is fine. And I, as long as you do it on cold, um, but I definitely cannot do it on, I can't let it spin. It's still, it doesn't have, it's a front loading, um, doesn't have the agitator in there, but it still goes a little too fast, even on delicate cycle, which is like really, uh, it's just a bummer. Uh, I really was looking forward to washing my knits um, in there. Okay, so upcoming knit. Oh, I do have more whips. I do have more whips. So I, I'm not really much of a project knitter. Like I'm not one of those knitters who are like, okay, I'm gonna finish this project all the way through. In case, in case you haven't noticed, I've been working on this since March. And also, side note, this is my project bag. It is from Bagu. I love these bags. Let's see if I can find a Bagu. There, there it is. That's my Bagu label. I love these Bagu bags. I just throw everything in there. I know other people have like more beautiful project bags with like zippers and everything that look great. I, this is just so easy and it's so easy to hold. I just go like this, throw it around my wrist. Or I tie it in a knot. And usually I'm carrying it around like this. Or can throw it in another bag. It can get wet. Um, I mean, it's not completely waterproof, but if it gets, a, if the outside gets a little wet, it does keep the inside dry. I have one, two, three. I think I have three other whips right now. But I'm more of a process knitter than I am a project-oriented knitter. Um, sometimes. I'll have things on the needles forever. Um, I'm trying to get better at finishing projects. So what do I have? What I have planned and coming up is I'm going to do the Louvre sweater. Let's pull that up by Petite Knit. Um, let's see, Louvre. I'm gonna search this on the iPad. Um, I am going to knit the Louvre sweater for my sister. And this is, I love petite knit patterns. Like her patterns are just to die for, aren't they? I think you call, you, I mean, you guys know, petite knit, great patterns. So I'm gonna do this one right here. Isn't her baby cute? The baby is so adorable. Swip over, there we go. There it is in dark gray. Um, I am knitting this one and I'm going to use this wool folk. I think this is far. Yeah, it's far. And this color is just so gorgeous. I love the color. The color is number 31. Um, I got this at Monarch Knitting in Monterey Bay. Um, it's 100% merino wool and I love it. It is so soft, it's so fuzzy. It's just so, it's like skin to like, yarn to skin is just, like you want this on your face, it's so beautiful. And so I'm going to knit the Louvre in this. This is for my sister. Hopefully I'll have it done by Christmas, but I need to start. Um, I did another petite knit sweater 
a while ago at the beginning of this uh, beginning of this calendar year and I was able to do it in like five weeks um, because this definitely isn't like a super super thin yarn if this was like much thinner it would take me forever then I have another petite knit pattern the melange sweater and it's going to be done in this beautiful merino and I'm going to hold these two together this merino wool is from Color Mart let me pull this out and when you get these two when you get these two together I, I swatched it already and that was before I moved and I have no idea where my swatch bag is. Like I keep all my yarn swatches in one bag and I think it's behind the stairs or under the stairs and I can't find it. So here we go. And that is gonna look so nice. I loved it. The swatch is beautiful. It is so soft and fuzzy. This yarn is, it's a cobweb weight, which means it's like really, really, really fine. Let's see if I can show you. And this is wound by eight. So when I ordered this, I said, wind it by eight or ply it by eight, eight strands. And so here is one, it's like literally like a thread, right? And so it's been on this, what the hell? Okay, there we go. Can you see it? Like, do you see the fuzziness coming off of it? It's, you can just see all that fuzz and it's the, the fluffiness. And then when you put eight of those together, you get this. And then I'm gonna hold it with this. And it's just, I, hopefully the blend will be so beautiful. So each one of these cones, this is a 300 gram cone and it has about 1100 yards on this cone and so hopefully the two of these together i think i'm going to get a, a, an okay sweater i think i would i would really love it if i had like 150 more yards but i don't and and i bought the last two so there's two cones they come um claire mart sells in 150 gram cones so there's two cones on here and two cones on here. So like I said, 300 cone, um, this is a 300 gram cone. So I bought the last two cones of each color, I think. Um, and so this is it. And like I said, like if you've ever heard me talk about Color Mart, it's like my favorite place to get yarn from. It's Yarn Remnants um, and Mill Ends from the spinning mills. Um, but once it's gone, it's gone. Like you can't get it back. Um, I think this will be enough. If anything, if I have to, I will make um, a bracelet sleeve sweater. And if I really, really have to, I'll go up to um, an elbow, mid, mid arm sleeve sweater. Like, now I have, this used to be down here. This used to be down, I have really exceptionally long arms. Like look at this. But um, this used to be down here um, before it shrunk. But now it's a bracelet sleeve and I've been getting used to it. So I think I can, I can deal with it. I, can, I like it. Um, I would just do, if I started to run out of yarn, I would do a bracelet sleeve for the melange sweater. It's just so beautiful. I can't wait to have those mixed up. Um, so those are my upcoming projects. I need to finish this cardigan, this baby sweater. 
And then I have um, some fingerless mitts to finish up. And I mean, that sounds, I know that sounds like such um, an easy fingerless mitts, like that's such an easy knit, right? Um, it was going really well. And then I had trouble with the increases when you were doing the palm, the, like this area. And so I put it on hold and then summer came, stopped the project altogether. So I just have to pick it up and finish them up. Um, that was a gift for a friend and now it's like super belated gift. Uh, but other than that, that's all I've been working on. So I will end it here until next time. Bye-bye.